Hi, and welcome to No Borders Radio at nobordersradio.co.uk. Um, this is just Tammy filling in for Billy tonight as he's got other arrangements. Um, for recent news and updates, I think tonight we'll kind of take it easy and maybe go through some treaties and agreements with the United States Incorporated that involves every known quote country that's been created by charter ability, um, posting ability, and of course treaty ability. Treaties are agreements between two banks, um, a court in Black's Law Dictionary is defined as a bank, uh, if you look up the word bank that does mean court um, it it is shipping uh, under 46 USC United States Code you can go through it and realize quite swiftly what this is um, for further research you want to pick up maybe the dictionaries of commerce and navigation which again is shipping now we're at the end stages of this shipping schematic. Every 300 years they go nuts. And in that they call a populace. It doesn't matter where it is. This entity, this being that calls itself the United States Congress, has been known as many, many things. Germany. Westphalia, Rome, French Empire, English Empire, England the Kingdom, England and its surrounded territories as the United Kingdom. It's been known as many, many, many things. The name changes according only to market conditions what's most profitable to the quote king what's most profitable to the king maintaining human beings as subjects now the treaty of westphalia is quite long in its speech and for more information on speech i suggest everybody look up the great retra and again the Republic by Plato, uh, the Apology of Socrates, again Plato, who like Curtis was, the Spartan lawmaker, and you'll find immediately that Lycurgus was a fictional creation. Lycurgus is created in the mind. Law simply means to lay down, and the flip side of that is standing again, which encompasses the word resurrection to be able to stand again. The Treaty of Westphalia starts out peace treaty between the Holy Roman Empire and the King of France and their respective allies. In the name of the most holy and individual trinity be it known to all and everyone whom it may concern or whom in any manner it may belong that for many years past discords and civil divisions being stirred up in the Roman Empire which increased to such a degree that not only all Germany, but also the neighboring kingdoms, and France particularly, have been involved in the disorders of a long and cruel war. And in the first place, between the most serene and most prosient prince and lord, Ferdinand and the second of famous memory elected Roman Empire, always August, king of Germany, Hungary, Bohemia, Dalmatia, Croatia, Slavonia, Archduke of Austria, Duke of Burgundy, Brabant, Styria, Corinthia, Carniola, Marquis of Morava Moravia, Duke of Luxembourg, the higher and lower Silesia, of Württemberg, and Tech, Prince of Sabia, Count of Habsburg, Tyrol, Kyberg, and Gorisha, Marquis of the Sacred Roman Empire, Lord of Burgovia, the higher and lower Lusacer, Lusace, sorry, of the Marquisate of Slavonia, 
a port neon and Salines and his allies and adherents on one side and the most serene and the most person Prince Louis the 13th most Christian King of France and Navarre with his allies and adherents on the other side and after their decease D E C E A S E between the most serene and present Prince and Lord Ferdinand and the third elected Roman Empire always King of Germany, Hungary, Bohemia, Dalmatia, Croatia, Slavonia, Duke of Austria, Austria, Duke of Burgundy. And it goes on and on and on and on. And of course this encompasses everybody. Number one, that there shall be a Christian and universal peace. And a perpetual, true, and sincere amity between the sacred imperial majesty and and his most Christian majesty is also between all and each of the allies and adherents of the said imperial majesty, the house of Austria and its heirs and successors, but chiefly between the electors, princes, and states, capital S, T, A, T, E, S, of the empire on one side and all of each of the allies of his said Christian majesty and all of their heirs and successors chiefly between the most serene queen and kingdom of Swedenland, Swedland, the electors respectively, the princes and states, capital S, of the empire, on the other side, that this peace and amity be observed and cultivated with such sincerity and zeal, that each party shall endeavor to procure the benefit, honor, and advantage of the other, that thus on all sides they may see this peace and friendship in the Roman Empire and the kingdom of France flourish, by entertaining a good and faithful neighborhood. Now through the treaties of Versailles, the United States incorporated in France, along with all of their other allies in their empire, their confederacy in action, maintain that France owns all the water of the world. Anything parked on that water namely continents, is rented from France. Each charter sets up banks along those waterways. It creates channels and establishes posts and ports to be rented. The House of Saud owns all the ports, and you can find this in the 1832 Nullification Proclamation and related fallout. Spain owns all the roads. Canada has all the profit off of the bridges, tunnels, and turnpikes through the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Union and the Bridges, Tunnels, and Turnpikes Acts. A posting ability it sets up a little fort in any country called a post. You know it as the Postal Union Post Office. And this created locations in the mind. They don't exist as to ownership it only relies on consent with sending to be patronizing whatever government they establish there in the mind as a form of psychological warfare upon you. I urge everybody to read the entire Treaty of Westphalia. Uh, you can find that at avalon.law.yale dot edu forward slash 17th underscore century forward slash westfall w-e-s-t-p-h-a-l dot a-s-p for further information on these things. Now part of their trade lines which were established by Charter ability, establishing those banks and posts, channels, 
through the action of commerce and navigation establishes human trafficking trade lines. And this all comes from the British East Indian Trading Corporation. And if you go back into history, you can see immediately the, quote, indigenous tribes and, quote, aboriginals. And if you study the study of language and diacritics, you find out right away that the indigenous and aboriginals were parked there from elsewhere. They have the diacritics in their language of their original captors. For example, in India, the Urdu language, Hindu, Urdu, and Gramaki have French diacritic marks in their language. In Greece, the Greek language has French construct, French diacritic, and you know diacritic as Latin accents. Greek also has Italian diacritic in it. The breve, for example, which is a short sound. Breve meaning short in Italian. The French diacritic mark that is most widely used is, of course, the heavy mark, uh, meaning grave in the language. And you can, you know, bounce around. Think around and, and look these things up yourself. Start with the Greek and Latin roots and go from there. All language was created at the same time. It is known as Babylonian theory, or what was interpreted by priests as Babel. Babel's not a place. It's a psychological construct created through the action of psychiatry and the creation of language itself. Without that, there can be no culture. There can be no religious indoctrination. There can be no law. There can be no custom. There can be none of these concepts sold to humanity by the law merchant. Or the metaphor of the tree of knowledge. A tree of knowledge does not provide us with apples. A tree of knowledge provides us with concepts as its fruit. Now these trafficking lines are used to traffic mainly children and females, such as the Treaty of Peace, Treaty of Amity, Commerce and Navigation, Treaty of Versailles, the Northwest Passage. Most people are not aware that such as the Midwest and the United States Incorporated, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, was a French colony. It was part of Louisiana until they maintained treaties with each other, screaming out that they were bankrupt and they needed to discharge congressional bankruptcy, again, using children. They did the same thing in Australia several years ago, coming out with the stolen generations. All of a sudden they realized that there were stolen generations. All of a sudden they fed the sheeple. The, there was some kind of phenomena called these stolen generations. All of these things are conducive to commerce and navigation. From Wiki, the Stolen Generations, also known as the Stolen Children, were the children of Australian Aboriginal, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander descent who were removed from their families by the Australian federal and state government agencies and church missions under acts of their respective parliaments. Parler means to speak in French. Parliament 
is the action of speaking. That is not lawmaking. That's merely being a mouthpiece for somebody else. When we're speaking about the Australian federal and state government agencies and church missions under acts of their respective parliaments, we're speaking about congressional action. Congress is the lawmaking body globally since 1941 with the Atlantic Charter. I'll continue reading. The removals occurred in the period between approximately 1909 and 1969, although in some places children were still being taken until the 1970s. Documentary evidence such as newspaper articles and reports to parliamentary committees suggest a range of rationales. Motivations evident include child protection. That's the same Stasi that Hitler employed. Going back to the statement of the Australian federal and state government agencies, federal is always maintained, that is the Reich Tag, and state, under definition of 28 U.S.C. chapter 97, national state, has always been the Reich Rat. It's always been the same human trafficking schematic maintained by Congress since the original charters. When you go look up the etymology on the word Satan, Satan simply means your adversary, one who plots against you. Congress, whereby is Satan, and plots against you in the action of fourth generation warfare. Just one moment, folks. Scottish Sovereigns on the land and the home of No Borders Radio. Hi and welcome back to No Borders Radio right here on nobordersradio.co.uk. This is Tammy filling in for Billy tonight. Um, thank you, Ben and Billy, for allowing us this opportunity. Uh, before I had to jump off, we were speaking about the stolen generations. And um, I'll, I'll begin at the second paragraph. Documentary evidence such as newspaper articles and reports to par parliamentary committees suggest a range of rationales. Motivations in evident include child protection, beliefs that given their catastrophic population decline after white contact that aboriginal people would die out, and a fear of miscegenation by full-blooded Aboriginal people. That's not the truth. These acts were, of course, maintained by Congress, and the resultant concepts were maintained through the education imposed upon the human populace. Miscegenation is from the Latin miser, to mix plus genus, kind. It is a mixing of different racial groups through marriage, cohabitation, sexual relations, and procreation. Congress has this eugenics program going on since forever. I mean, you can go all the way back to Greece, Sparta, all of these created places and find the same program pogrom you can find the same pogrom related in the old testament which is their manifest and a continuation through treaty ability you can find the most current treaties on avalon.law.yale.edu forward slash subject underscore menus forward slash n treaty dot asp which are the treaties between the United States and Native Americans. Now these treaties all have little clauses in them They're called grandfather clauses. 
So first they implement these treaties and agreements between the two banks. Then they move in with fourth generation warfare, appearing to be friendly. Remember the word amity is always used. In this friendly manner, perpetrated by Congress through fourth generation warfare, these treaties say, we'll give you a plot of land. However, however, if your people die out and you don't have the bloodline, we get the line back. We get the land back. Which is what everybody's seeing across the globe through the 1974 Reclamation Acts. Maintained, of course, by Congress. This is reclaiming those territories. The federal state is foreclosing on the national state. Or the Reichstag is foreclosing on the Reichsrat. Identical to what Hitler did in 1933 with his act of enablement. Enabling the Reichsrat to act on behalf of the federal state or the Reichstag, as Germany was known as a republic at that time. And of course, hopefully you can see where this is going. So they come in with treaty ability and they give land, which was yours in the first place. And when they give it, all they need is your consent saying that they own it in order to give it. And they did the same thing with through the use of the 1802 Indemnification Convention in 1802. In this, five commissions were set up. Commission. These are the things that are the commission states. You have a board of governors. You have the Association of Corporate Council. And of course, in every county, in every place, they have the commission state. The state commissions whoever they say, whatever they need done to be done. Later, after they, quote, give these lands with their specific clauses in them, if you ever breed out and you no longer have the bloodline, we get the land back. Well, that's called a market condition. At that time, they're indoctrinating constitutional theory. They're telling the human populace, this is what you are, this is what you consist of, and under this business schematic, this is how it's going to be. Of course, this is done in a conservative manner. Of course, indoctrinating constitutional theory requires that the sheeple allow and, and enter into their own mindset some form or vision of a republic. And in that conservative mindset, of course, they've indoctrinated already the religious indoctrination needed to perpetrate these things. The language, culture, and establishment of these little sects, S-E-C-T, of human beings in a conservative manner, very, very conservative manner. Now the mindset of conservative maintains that the human that has this or holds this does not like change. So according to policy, the same lawmakers will come in later and develop such as the affirmative action laws. So they tell you if you age out, if you breed out, they get the land back. And in this, of course, this is a racist mindset. It says, okay, if we want to keep our land, we need to breed with each other. We need to not crossbreed. We don't want to go outside of our, quote, race, although everybody's a human race. But Satan has so many twisted ideologies and ideas and in this it has a very very efficient business model so they implicate affirmative action laws and they say well you're racist you need to start breeding outside of your race and the UN comes in and says well we're gonna adopt some 
people into your tribe so that we can make it appear like, no, you're not racist. They weren't racist in the first place. Congress is, of course. But that's how they take back the land. Now you're crossbreeding and interbreeding and all of these things, and all of a sudden you don't have any land. Well, it's a business schematic. And if they take all of your children off of you through child protection, and they move them around the planet, the globe, and call them refugees, they're no longer on the land, are they? If they kill off the, all of the elders of the populace, and the children don't know what's going on, they can indoctrinate the children and maintain policy and agenda. Which is exactly what happened, and the reason for the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. President Lincoln, who's clergy for Congress, and at that time a member of the credit reporting system of Dun & Bradstreet, which is also known as CIBAR, the British Accreditation Registry. It's simply a registry. And all of these things are part of that business schematic, the corporate structure itself. So in the mind you have this government or a house, however you're seeing it, but it's all an illusion. It never existed except for on paper. Articles of Confederation maintain that America itself is a style, S-T-I-L-E, which means a chain of events or congressional action. So the, quote, greatest country in the world is not a country at all. The geographical state, geo means earth, g means earth, graph means to write about. So the geographical state is only one that's written about. And if you believe that it exists, it exists. And if you believe you live there, you are a thing, a res of the House of Representatives. Now this house is created on paper. It's an illusion sold to you by the Tree of Knowledge. Concepts after concept, or which is a chain of events maintained by Congress. Now this house, it has different floors called departments. Department of Transportation, Department of this or that, and in those departments, which is like a floor of a building, there are offices. Office of, so Department of Transportation, Office of Transportation, would fit into each, quote, state. And each country, quote, country, is split up into regional and districts and circuits. Those things, too, are created in the mind. 1789 Judiciary Act created the districts and the banking ability and what everybody knows as courts, for example. 1794 Treaty of Amity Commerce Navigation maintains the ports or the posts. And you know them as post offices. Those are posts along a railway line. The Railway Consortium is another nice term for the slave trafficking industry. Of course, human beings and products, commodities are shipped along by the railway, where, where uh, railways inland or within the borders of France's water. And this brings us to the nature of rent or Malthusian theory. You can also find that at avalon.law.yale.edu. In these, everything is established as a form of human trafficking, shipping, commerce, and navigation. British East Indian Trading Corporation, it was once Portugal, France, Spain, Italy. You've got the big charter big, big charter, bank charter, which was called the Magna Carta. Magna Carta in Italian is simply big charter. It's, it's a big bank. 
As you go along these departments, the floors of this elusive building, and you have offices, you also have rooms and hallways. Those rooms and hallways are called chambers. You know them as Chamber of Commerce, Chamber of this or that. The House of Delegates, for example, the lower houses of the House of Representative, Representatives, are the lower chambers of the house, lower rooms, lower hallways. And in this schematic, you've got this huge Leviathan. This was referred to as a Leviathan in 1651 by Hobbes. Thomas Hobbes goes into the use of speech, imagination, concepts to create things such as, quote, man. Man, of course, is a legal creation. You are a state of being before you take up a concept, before you purchase anything from the tree of knowledge, you already are. Your existence cannot be defined by attorneys, lawmakers, dictators within the realm of a dictionary or a lexicon which simply means with law the original dictionaries everybody can go search on thomas or the library of congress for congressional actions since way back when not a lot of people know about the original dictionaries you can go it's a free google book on google I search the Dictionary of Commerce and Navigation, and there's different variants on it. These are actually the original congressional actions. You have a combination of words and word uses, as well as actions taken against the human being. The human being has always been the enemy of the state. It just looks really, really pretty. It looks like something that cares for you and protects you within the action of patriotism. But as it's written, Jesus said, call no man your father. Don't patronize anything, not even Christ. He was trying to tell you that you need to live in your own house, and not inside of the House of Representatives. Patronize your own self. And each other. He said that several times. Love your neighbor as thyself. Love yourself as God. Over and over and over again. Three times. Second Corinthians 13. He spake, this is the third time I'm coming to you. Know thyself. Know who you are. 1 Corinthians 6 says you can only fornicate by giving your body over to the Lord God. The body is not for fornication but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. God hath both raised up the Lord, so shall he raise us up by his own power. He was speaking about you. Prior to this, he says, don't go into court, don't patronize a judge. Don't you know that you're the judge? You shall judge the saints. And in this, when you walk away from yourself or being outside of yourself, which is the action of Exodus. Exo means outside of and Deus means God. And of course, everybody knows about the Ten Commandments handed down by a judge, Moses. As the same corporate council attorneys and chief priests and elders, which are the elders of the community, the ones with money, corporations, Google, Microsoft, Anheuser Bush. These are the things that allow Judas to turn on you. 
Etymology of Jesus means your earth. It's G-E, which means earth, and S-U-I-S in Latin means yours. This means you need to protect you and your each other. And again, Jesus told us time and time and time and time again, we're all members of the body of Christ. We're not separate units. Members are like an arm or a leg, a brain, cells. We all speak the same word. This is written again in Revelation 19. The rider on the white horse. And in the end, God is the entity that walks and talks like God. It's not somebody pretending to be and standing up with a microphone and spilling out nice words of the great rhetoric over and over again as the fictional Lycurgus. That's not God, that's somebody pretending to be God, that's a demigod. And something we're not supposed to worship. The action of court, everybody knows about bail and bonds and arrest. All of these terminologies, that's the action of Baalism, that is the worship of Marduk, demigod. That's the action of piracy, taking something from somebody and demanding a ransom in order to get it back, including yourself. The system works on bail or Baalism. It always has and will continue until everybody stops patronizing it, calling it their father. Its only function is human trafficking. Inside of that function, when the human is not producing, when it ages out and it's no longer beneficial to the state, that product is cold. And you can see this in a relative state from the 1927 action that the Bear Corporation took against Poland to spark the Second World War through Congress's court. The Bear Corporation came in and asked Congress if it could indemnify Poland. And Congress's judge came back and said, yup. And what you saw as racial tension, Nazi Germany and Hitler, was merely Congress. And Hitler was merely a mouthpiece on behalf of Congress as it took all of the state overhead and called it. Limiting liability, of course, and facilitating general average which is the action of throwing dead weight over the side of a ship to cut the expense. These things, when they occurred, of course everybody saw Hitler, but the eugenics program in the United States began with Margaret Sanger through the use of the, what was then Planned Parenthood League, Planned Parenthood, and its target was anyone who is off color, not white. Well, if humans are not racist, of course we're not racist, we're all human. We're the same race. Congress is not the same race. It's missing the frontal lobe. Any entity that can view a human being as a piece of meat, disposable, as a product, as a human resource, as a thing to dress up the garden, is known as a psychopath. When you go back into human history, you find that before Neanderthal was Cro-Magnon man. Cro-Magnon man didn't have a frontal lobe. Neanderthal, of course, being the evolved species 
And of course, again, Cro Magnon perverted history. Well, why would they do that? Well, this schematic only works if Cro Magnon Man is still around. So it has to do things to prevent evolution. It has to slow you down. It has to feed you things that allow you to be slowed down. It has to impede you in variants on psychiatry, medical industry. It has to kill you soon. It has to do things to your frontal lobe so that your children are missing pieces of their DNA. And you see this in the sports industry, football specifically, skiing, and other, quote, sports that man never really had time for prior to Congress inventing these things and teaching you that there's some kind of fun. The rate of head injuries in the football industry is absolutely horrifying. However, it's the same with car accidents and the way that the cars are built. Uh, way back when, buggy accidents, same thing. Well, when you have surgical procedures done and they remove the frontal lobe, or through the use of prescription medications, the frontal lobe is burnt out or removed in other variants, such as through the use of chemotherapy or the use of uh, radiation. Any children born of that new product are also going to have something wrong with the frontal lobe. The DNA has been just obliterated. What this does is it prevents evolution. So the next generation is not evolving, it's actually going backwards. And this is what Cro-Magnon relies on. You can read about this in Genesis, as it stipulates what happened when this began. Genesis stems from the word abiogenesis, which means away from life, mind, and soul. A part of this being away from life, mind, and soul is through social engineering, indoctrination, and of course, shock doctrine. We send our little boys and little girls now off to war to fight for our quote countries with an action of patriotism. Shock doctrine has an ability to really mess with the frontal lobe. within the action of disassociation. Somebody's going to be split as they're witness to the most horrifying things. Killing another human being is very painful. Watching the killing of human beings is very painful. And these aren't just, you know, bang bang, shoot them up parties. Congress has a history of burning witches, burning human beings, torturing them in Gitmo and other locations, gang raping other countries' citizens, teaching their soldiers to do these things, and making sure that there's enough psychopaths within these units to per perpetrate the most heinous crimes upon otherwise human human beings with the frontal lobe intact. This works the same way under fourth generation warfare in your own homes. FBI agents, police detectives who are FBI agents trained at Quantico have been known to kill parents in front of the children raise homes, traumatize the children through child sexual abuse, through not only these FBI agents, but through the action of psychiatry, priests, attorneys and cops, armed to the teeth, maintaining children in fear, 
abject fear, just the most subjugated state. And again, that child's reaction to those things is known as reactive behaviorisms. Commerce and navigation relies on diagnosis and repair under the action of bottom rebounds. And so, therefore, it relies on abuse, slaughter, rape, molestation, pillaging, raping communities in mass. We've seen this in Cambodia with Pol Pot and Germany with Hitler and everywhere in between Vietnam, Korea, Japan. As these children are traumatized, they lose themselves. Where do you go when your family is slaughtered? Other than straight into the arms of Moses, the same entity that perpetrated that war against you. And of course, within fourth generation warfare, you've got the maintenance of a perpetual quiet war maintained on the ground in your own communities through child protective services, adult protection, legal process, probate courts, and everything in between, the medical industry, psychological industry, criminal industry. And these things are very, very quiet gulag. I urge everybody to read that one as well, the Gulag Archipelago. Andrew S. writes about that one very succinctly about his time in the Gulag and what he witnessed. All of these things are absolutely horrifying. Now, what we're in now is what is relative to Revelation. These things are all being revealed to you. Those seals that are broken, the six seals, is your walk that you go through as you realize these things. As it makes you sick to your stomach and it tastes so much like vinegar as you're fed this gall. I know these things are very hard. I've lived it. I went through the same thing that you're going through now. And I'm living evidence that it can be overcome. As you divest yourself of all of these concepts and entitlements and psychological warfare that's been used against you for years and years and years and years, the weight lifts and you become lighter and lighter which is what is known as an ascension you're rising you're resurrecting you're being able to stand again and with this knowledge comes authority not power authority you write the book you are the author When you realize how many ways Congress has been tricking you out and stealing your children, using your parents, slaughtering you, and using every manner of psychological, biological warfare, chemical warfare against you, you get angry. This is also written in Revelation as these things are made known, it becomes the apocalypse. And that's not zombies coming. Apocalyptine or apocalypse etymology simply means to bring forth from a hidden state, to reveal, to make evident. And it's absolutely beautiful. <clears throat> I 
I'll continue reading on the stolen generations. Um, the second part, emergence of the child, child removal policy. One view suggests that the motivation and purpose of the laws providing for the removal of Aboriginal children from their parents was child protection with government policymakers and officials responding to an observed need to provide protection for, quote, neglected, abused, or abandoned mixed descent children. And these things are absolutely horrifying. What would the need be to remove mixed descent children other than racism? Now we see with the introduction of Mondale's CAPTA laws, the Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act, CAPTA that maintain federal dollars to remove children for the prevention of child abuse. That doesn't mean the children are neglected. That doesn't mean the children are abused. It means that the state is taking children, period. before anything can happen. And of course, this is guised under, quote, child protection, which is actually the war tactic known as hearts and minds, when force is imposed upon a populace, and then the Department of Health and Human Services comes in to offer alleviation of that force imposed it's the same enemy. It's the same war. It just looks really nice. In 1974, Henry Kissinger came in under the National Security Act of 1947 to the National Security Council, which is across the board global. And he said depopulation should be the highest priority of all foreign policy. Foreign policy means communication between two or more foreign states, as defined by 28 U.S.C. subsection 1603. Foreign state, of course, is a corporation. Google, Microsoft, County of Anheuser Bush. Those are foreign states. Foreign policy is merely the communication between those states. Henry Kissinger, Dr. Henry Kissinger, said in 1974 to the National Security Council that depopulation should be the highest priority of all foreign policy. In 1975, Dr. Henry Kissinger founded the group to achieve his goal and called it the Office of Population Affairs. The Office of Population Affairs is also known as the Department of Health and Human Services. And its name changes within each quote, corporate body. It can be called Family and Youth Services, Child and Family Services, Child Protection, Welfare, Social Services. Those are all under the Office of Population Affairs. They are the introduction of Hearts and Minds, whereby the subjected populace reaches out for help and it finds itself in the jaws of the wolf guarding the hen house. 
Now, the, quote, state of Virginia passed the Racial Integrity Act of 1924 on March 20th, 1924. The Virginia General Assembly, which is Congress attorneys, passed two laws that had arisen, arisen out of the contemporary concerns about eugenics and race, called SB 219, entitled the Racial Integrity Act, and SB 281, an act to provide for the sexual sterilization of inmates of state institutions in certain cases, henceforth referred to as the Sterilization Act. Now these Tory Strait Islanders and Aboriginals were removed from their families. Many were institutionalized without cause, simply based on the such as CAPTA, the Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act. Now this depopulation program has gone even further in recent history. In 2010, the state of Florida started dosing male children who had autism, which is a socially engineered disorder. And at this point in time, one in Ten males were diagnosed. Male children diagnosed with autism. Currently, the last reported statistics that I came across was one in four male children are diagnosed with autism in the United States Incorporated alone. Well, the Florida Psychological Association, the psychiatrist first imposed autism upon the populace, which is force. When a child is egregiously abused, especially the male, and the male is vilified and taught that his penis is bad, through the media, which is controlled by the Broadcasting Board of Governors, you can go to bbg.gov and read about that on their about pages. They have full international control of all civil media. When these concepts are imposed upon a populace, these quote doctors and authoritarians, authoritarians come in and sell the populace the quote remedy or cure. In 2010, Florida began their program of sterilization by prescription medication. They began giving male children diagnosed with autism the chemical castration drug called Lupron to treat autism. This is a form of chemical warfare, biological warfare, perpetrated by your own government. But it looks really pretty. It doesn't look like the Racial Integrity Act of 1924. It doesn't look like the st Stolen Generations. It doesn't look like the Franklin scandal, the conspiracy of silence. It doesn't look like the thousand females that were just now found to be missing in Canada. None of it looks like that. It doesn't look like a depopulation program. It looks pretty. It looks friendly. A treaty sounds pretty. Law sounds nice. All of these things are designed 
to not only depopulate, but to pit you against your fellow human being, yourself, and each other through the indoctrination of culture, custom, language itself, religious indoctrination, by which to separate you. And then, of course, the manufacture of madness. Way back when, they were teaching that there was such a thing as witches. Now, they teach mental health, disordered thought, things of that nature, by which, through diagnosis, you are pit and polarized against each other. Nobody's the same anymore. Nobody's of the body of Christ. Now everybody is is completely different. They're disordered. They're um, sick. They have cancer. They have uh, bipolar disorder. Autism. Bipolar and schizophrenia are founded in the action of disassociation. Of course, disassociation comes from shock doctrine, by which somebody's traumatized to the extent that their mind splits. You can read about this in their own laws, going all the way back to the separation of the spiritual and the temporal. Uh, of course, passed down by a king. These things allow you to split from the pain that's traumatizing you. First, you have to be introduced to the concepts of whatever necessary to maintain those market conditions. As a child of the sexual abuse, child sexual abuse industry. The trauma that was upon me during those times, I don't believe would have even existed had I not first been taught that my body was an object that my virginity was something so important allowing me to have a, a denomination or a financial value to somebody in the future the moment that that virginity was taken away in my childhood it destroyed me or it felt like destruction and it took many many years to realize these constructs and a great friend who came to me at one point in my life and this is the part part where I was still dealing with it not you know um, realizing the full reality of all of the things that had happened upon us as children, it was my younger brother and I. And I had spoken to him and I said, you know, losing my virginity, I lost the gift that I had for my husband. Now, I speak English and my friend was from the Netherlands, so he spoke Dutch and English as a second language. And he says, well, how did they take that gift then? If your virginity is a gift to your husband, how can somebody take that gift? At that point in time, it was so profound, the reactive behaviors that I eventually experienced because for so long my entire being was missing 
somebody had taken that virginity. I no longer had that gift. And so my value had decreased. When in reality, that value was put there by a Lord God. It was put there by a psychopath in the first place. The value never existed. Except for in the mind. That's another market condition. And when attorneys, which we were fully involved in the sex trafficking industry, and it was attorneys and cops, psychiatrists, and all of these politicians passing children back and forth to each other, selling them within the industry. While at the same time, you know, Andy and I were, were involved with the church and being indoctrinated that we were the sinners. We had to have done something wrong to be paid back by God. You know the works. But that's the story of Job. That's how Job enters into being Job. He's striving so hard to please the Lord God. He's striving to pay his taxes and he's striving to be a good boy. And he's striving to teach his children to be good boys and good girls. Identical as to what we're taught by these priests, scribes, and Pharisees. Whom are the same ones cashing in on all of this? Priests, of course, are the psychiatrists and priests, pastors, counselors, scribes. Scribe has always meant nothing more than writers, the media, the broadcasting board of governors, and Pharisee, which stems from pharaohs of the sea. Well, what's the sea? The sea is the sea of commerce. The law merchant themselves is called Pharisee, which is attorney, judge. American jurisprudence. All of these things are selling you concepts. Psychological industry sells us concepts. It sold me the concept of virginity, concept of giving that virginity later as a gift to my husband. It sold me all of these concepts so that I could feel bad if I lost those things. When in reality, those things never existed in the first place. This is the ultimate form of human trafficking. Because if they can sell us that we have something and then sell it back to us, such as a right or a benefit that comes along with one or the other concepts, such as female or male alone. If you look up gen gender, the etymology on gender, genera, genus, species, stock. So if I'm claiming to be a female, I'm a different race now. I'm a different genus. And in that fictional state of being, they sell me my rights. The law merchant comes in and says, well, you've got female rights and you've got white or black rights, red rights, whatever else they took by concept after teaching us those concepts. Everybody knows about aristocratic societies and democratic societies and republics. All of these things are concepts. And it's the same owners. It's the same farmers that established their original colonies. Colony simply means landed estate. The etymology in Washington. They quote forefathers. Washington means the estate of a man named Wasso. When you go into the etymology on Wasso, it comes from vassal. Vassal. One who pays homage to another. So Washington simply means they're just going to hold your estate as long as you patronize them. That's it. And this human trafficking schematic, this is all they do. The educational system alone, the word education stems from the word pedagogy, meaning attendance on boys, which is the metaphor for removal of the firstborn son. Unless you have that mark on your door, 
It says they're not going to remove you, which of course is a metaphor for Bush and Obama, Clinton, Lincoln, and other elites. They have the mark of that education wherein they know what these words mean. Patrick Leahy, Joseph Biden, knows the benefit from this human trafficking schematic have been charging you for this quote educational experience or indoctrination forever. You can go back to uh, Protagoras. Plato wrote of Protagoras, or the protected one, protege. And in this, you can read about Hippocrates, the quote, father of all medicine, which was not Galen, was the father of language and medicine, law, as a psychiatrist and linguist, way, way back when. But in Protagoras, you can learn about Hippocrates buying his medical ability, along with all of the rest. If you have the money, you have the education. And if you do not have the money, you're a plebeian. And for all of those that are listening that may not have an education relative to others, be thankful. It's easier for you to divest yourself of all that possesses you as Jesus taught than it is if you are a geologist or a psychologist or holding any other titles and diplomas and degrees. I know it took me forever because I had a certain very stiff mindset when I first started realizing what all these things are and as my teachers were writing me and reminding me daily that they're harsh taskmasters and here I was squirming and whining and I really didn't want to go into those places. It's absolutely horrifying what Congress has done throughout the years. What Satan has done upon human beings. It's absolutely disgusting what's been allowed to occur throughout time simply because they hold the educational system. Human beings are not experiencing relative humanity or relative existence, relative experiences. Now they're being told by others, which is action of science. Science simply means to grasp knowledge rather than experience the same knowledge through your own walk. And as it's gone along, you know, you start out with the Delphi technique, Delphi method, which is repetition after repetition after repetition of what they want you to know. And eventually this maintains a, what is known as consensus reality. It's a reality that stacks based on, quote, the norm. Hitler's propaganda minister, Joseph Goebbels, said it best when he said if you repeat a lie often enough it becomes the truth. Now if one scientist says well this is the truth and another scientist says well this is the truth and another scientist backs that up as a peer review and that becomes the truth regardless of actuality. And this again is what the system relies on. It relies on this corporate structure, this business schematic maintained under psychological warfare. This is exactly what it is. You are subjugated by these lies repeated often enough that they become the truth. Now again, I know that I've been going on and on. Um, I urge everybody to read all of the treaties between the United States and Native Americans so that you can see exactly the eugenics program from start to finish. Um, 
Black Genocide has a great site regarding Margaret Sanger. Uh, but the treaties between the United States and Native Americans can be found at avalon.law.yale.edu forward slash subject underscore menus forward slash n as in Nancy treaty dot ASP. Let's see. Um, sorry, I'm using a new browser. And I didn't import my my um, favorites. The site to go to and read about Margaret Sanger um, is www.blackgenocide.org forward slash Sanger S A N G E R dot H T M L and of course the stolen generations you can find at Wikipedia simply by searching stolen generations on Google the racial integrity act of 1924 passed by Virginia you can find simply by googling that and um, again uh, I think I took enough of your time today and kind of running out of things to say. I had other things planned, um, but again, all of that falls through. Leviathan is one of the most important books anyone can read. And um, the, let me pull that up real quick. It's actually called, the full name is Leviathan, or The Matter, Form, and Power of a Commonwealth, Ecclesiastical and Civil, by Thomas Hobbes. This is written and printed for Andrew Crook of the Green Dragon in St. Paul's Churchyard in 1651. Now, if I have a very... I love my copy of it in writing. However, the entire book is on audiobook as well. And you can find this at all one word books should be free dot com forward slash book forward slash Leviathan L E V I A T H A N dash books dash I as in one, the Roman numeral, dash and, dash ii, Roman numeral for two, dash by, dash Thomas, dash Hobbes, H-O-B-B-E-S. And I, I was listening again recently um, and found it to be very, very um, audible. You know, I've tried to read it in the past. And my tongue, it uh, doesn't work for me. And it's better if you go to the bookshouldbefree.com site and listen to it there um, because I really do uh, plunder variants on Latin and English. Of course, you know, being raised with slang and other things as well as uh, being older now and not having the eyesight I used to have. So I'm going to close this out now and I hope that everybody enjoyed this time as much as I did. Thank you for allowing me to be here and, and filling in for Billy and I pray that everybody is well. Be well everybody. That's all they do is prey on us. <laughs>